<clears throat> okay, hello everyone in a new video and this one we are going to solve some exercises so we have reached part 6 of chapter 7 which is the chapter of Newton's second law for grade 11 students so let's start exercise number 9 they are telling me starting from O at the instant T0 is equal to 0 seconds an object S of mass M is equal to 4 kilograms. So the moment the object has a mass, then it will be directly subjected to the weight. It's pulled up on a rough inclined plane. This is extremely important. By rough means that uh, friction exists between the solid S and the plane. Making an angle alpha is equal to 30 degrees. With the horizontal by means of a force parallel to the incline of magnitude F is equal to 28 newtons. The magnitude of the force of friction is given by F is equal to 4 newtons. And take G is equal to 10 meter per second square, which means this experiment is being performed on the surface of Earth. Now, if you look carefully, so... So we expect that the solid S must fall due to the action of gravity, but uh, here in this case, there is another force opposing the action of the weight and the friction, which is capital F. So usually we take the positive X direction to be downward along the inclining plane, but in this case it's given by this, because the, this is the direction of motion. So always the uh, positive direction of the X axis is taken in the direction of motion, okay? And recall that we have chosen this direction in order to eliminate one variable which is the motion along the y-axis now number one they are telling me name and represent the forces acting on us so because it has a mass then it will be directly subjected to the weight which is vertically downward now uh, the other force that they mentioned is the friction F other than that we have the applied force capital F And because we have a support, then it will be subjected to the normal reaction, which is R. Or let me say normal reaction, capital M. So we are done with the naming now. Let me represent the forces. For this reason, let me sketch the inclined plane. So this is the positive direction of the x-axis and this is the y-axis. Notice that in this case O it may represent the origin but we can change the position of the origin. So this is the solid S, this is the angle alpha, this is the positive direction of the x-axis. This is the positive direction of the y-axis. This is the angle alpha. Now we are ready to represent the forces. So this is the force F. Acting in this direction, we have the weight which acts vertically downward like this. We have the force of friction. Now notice that because F is moving upward, so the force of friction always opposes the direction of motion, which is backward, in the, in the negative direction of the x-axis. And the normal reaction is upward. So this is capital F. This is small f. This is the weight W, and this is the normal reaction N. Okay, now let me let me specify the angles. If this is alpha, then this angle here is pi by two minus alpha because this is pi by two. Now notice that this line is parallel to this line, so this is simply pi by two minus alpha. So this angle is pi by two minus alpha, in which this angle is the angle alpha. Okay. 
so this is it for number one. Now in number two they are telling me <coughs> by applying Newton's second law of translational motion verify that the expression of the acceleration of S is given by that. So we need to determine the expression of the acceleration. We know that acceleration appears in Newton's second law and usually we follow several steps. Step number one, we are writing this on the scratch. They are give, it's given by list the forces. Step number two is uh, choose a reference system. Step number three is the project. And step number four, project the forces here, project forces is sum of forces is equal to ma and project the equation okay so we are done with the step numbers uh, steps number one and two let's go to step number three is the projection of the forces so let's start by the weight w we have the wx notice that wx is pointing in an opposite direction of the x-axis this is Wx, making an angle pi by 2 minus alpha with the x-axis. So this is Wy. As for W, sorry, Wx, as for Wy, it's pointing in the negative direction of the y-axis. So it's minus. Uh, w multiplied by cosine of the angle between uh, the W vector and the Y axis which is cosine alpha. Now as for the force F so Fx is completely lying on the X axis so it's minus F and as for the Y axis it's zero. Now as for the uh, capital force F we have that fx is completely along, along the x-axis, so it's plus f as for fy is equal to zero. Now as for the normal n, or let's say also force n, we have that nx is equal to zero, and ny is equal to plus n. Okay, so now we have, list, uh, we have determined the projection now. We are ready to use the equation sum of forces is equal to ma. But first, we need to apply the uh, need to mention the law because always in physics we mention the law that we are using. And here, let me say apply Newton's second law. So, uh, what are the different forces acting on the solid? As we have the weight plus a small f plus capital F plus capital N. So let's start by the projection along the x-axis. So in this case, we drop down all the vectors, and each vector quantity will carry the label x. So we have wx plus small fx plus capital Fx plus nx is equal to max. Notice that m is a scalar quantity and it cannot be pro be projected on the x-axis or on the y-axis. Just give me one second. Okay, now uh, the value of wx is given by minus w sine alpha knowing that we are interested in determining ax plus small fx which is given by minus f plus capital fx which is given by plus f and nx is 0 is equal to max. So we are solving for Ax, then the expression of Ax is given by minus W sine alpha minus a small f plus capital F over M. Now A represents the acceleration of the system. We know that the acceleration is the vector quantity expressed Axi plus Ayj. In order to determine its magnitude, we need to take the square root of its components, Ax squared plus Ay squared. Now what we have done is we have determined Ax and eventually Ay is equal to zero and the reason is no, uh, no motion occurs 
along the y direction. Why? Simply because our choice have eliminated one variable which is the y axis. So the motion only occurs along the inclined plane and because we have chosen the x direction along the inclined plane, so no motion occurs along the y axis. So now we are ready to give the expression of a because we have determined ax and ay because simply a is equal to the square root of ax square plus ay square. So this is 0, then square root of ax square. This is give us plus or minus, and we are always interested in the positive solution. In this case, the acceleration is given minus sine alpha minus alpha plus alpha is equal to m. Now the expression of a is given by this. Now notice that the expression that we want to prove is that a is equal to capital F minus F minus mg sine alpha divided by m. Rearranging the equation and replacing w by its magnitude which is m multiplied by g, then the value of a is given by capital F minus small f minus mg sine alpha divided by m. What does each term? Alpha is the angle of inclination, m is the mass. F is the force of friction because here we have the minus sign, capital F is the applied force, and G reflects the planet on which we are performing this experiment. Now in number three they are telling me calculate the numerical value of the acceleration then deduce the nature of motion. So we have that capital F is equal to 28 newtons. Alpha I think it's given by 30 degrees. Uh, m is given by 4 kilograms and small f is given by 4 newtons. Now uh, let's uh, calculate the value of alpha. So 28 minus 4 minus 4 multiplied by 10 multiplied by 730. 730 is given by half. divided by 4 plugging this fraction on the calculator then the acceleration is given by 1 since everything is expressed in the SI so the value of A will be expressed in the SI which is a meter per second square so the value of A is given by 1 meter per second square what does this mean? Now notice that 1 meter per second square, meter per second square can be written as a fraction of meter divided by second square, which is meter divided by second, divided by second, right? Because this is as, as if it's divided by 1. So this with this, this with this. So meter per second can be written as meter per second per second. So what does this mean? that 1 meter per second square which is equal to 1 meter per second per second which means that the speed of the object increases 1 each 1 second okay so each 1 second the speed increases by 1 second now in the same part they are telling me to deduce the nature of motion and by deduce it means that we need to the previous part in the previous part we have calculated the numerical value of a and now knowing the value of A we can deduce the nature of motion. So here on the right let me write the, the equations of motion referring to URM and UVRM. Now we will decompose this motion as motion along the x-axis. And motion along the y-axis. So the motion along the x-axis may be URM, UVRM. The motion along the y-axis may be URM, UVRM or even no motion may exist. 
Now, as for the motion along the x-axis, we need to refer to the value of ax. Notice that a of x is equal to a is equal to 1. So a is equal to ax is equal to 1. So since ax is equal to 1 meter per second square, which is a number different than 0, which means that the type of motion is UVRM, then, uh, sorry, since it verifies the general form, A of x is equal to a constant, then the type of motion is UVRM along the x-axis. Now here, we could have said that since A, this A, is a constant and the motion occurs uh, and, direct, and the trajectory is rectilinear, so it's UVRM. But here, for example, I have split the motion into motion along the x-axis and along the y-axis. So in this case, no need to specify that the trajectory is rectilinear, okay? Now, as for the motion, I repeat that this could have, I could have answered this and by mentioning that the trajectory is rectilinear and the value of A is 1 meter per second, so the type of motion is UVRM. But here, because I have specified that the motion occurs along the axis, no need to specify the trajectory because simply x-axis is rectilinear. Now, motion along the y-axis So, simply no motion occurs along the y-axis Okay? Now, in uh, part 4, they are telling me determine the magnitude of the force exerted by the incline on the plane. We have four forces. Here they are referring to the physical definition of the force. So the force exerted by the inclined plane on the block is given by the normal reaction. We are interested in determining the magnitude of N. The initial equation, which is the vectorial equation, is given by this. Now let's do the projection along the y-axis. So now we drop down the vector quantities and each vector quantity will carry the label y. Now we are interested in determining ny which is simply n. So w, uh, wy I think it's given by minus cosine alpha. This is 0 and this is 0. Let me check. Yes. So plus n, which is equal to 0. So the value of n is simply given by w cosine alpha. w is given by m multiplied by g and the value of m is 40. So this is 40 newtons. 40 multiplied by cosine 30. Cosine 30 is given by radical 3 over 2, so this is equal simply to 20 radical 3 newtons. So the value of n is given by 20 radical 3 newtons. So notice that although we know that what causes the motion is a force, so here although there is a force acting in the y direction, but there is another force which is w, cosine alpha acting along the negative direction, W cosine alpha, so they cancel in each other, and along the y axis, it is not in motion, okay? But this doesn't mean that the solid S is at equilibrium. It is not at equilibrium because simply the motion occurs along the x axis. Now they are telling me to calculate the distance covered by S at t is equal to 2 seconds, and since they are talking about the distance, so they are asking me our parameters related to kinematics. Because they are asking me about the distance, we know the distance doesn't appear in Newton's second law. It appears in the equations of motions that are given by these.
So these equations allows us to determine other parameters like speed and distance. So we are interested in determining the distance at t is equal to 2 seconds, okay? So we started from this point, from the origin at the instant t0 equal to 0, and we've reached somewhere here at the instant t is equal to 2 seconds, okay? So now we will use these equations, uh, the one that are for UVRM in order to determine the distance. The distance is related to the position which is given by x is equal to half a t square plus v zero t plus x zero. And why I'm using x and not y? Because simply the motion exists along the x axis. The distance d is given by this variable minus the initial. Initial so d is equal to x minus x zero. The initial corresponds for x zero. So if this is the origin O, I repeat, although I have chosen this to be the origin, but this is not important because I can move the, the axis as I want simply in order to project the forces, okay? So this is zero. Why this is zero? X zero is equal to zero starting from the origin. I repeat, although I have chosen the origin to be here, but this is not important because whenever we are doing projections, we can move uh, the line of actions as long as they are kept uh, parallel to them to themselves. What do I mean by this? This means that this vector w can be moved as I wish as long as it, as it is kept parallel to itself. Simply for the axes, the axes can be moved the way I want and, uh, as long as they are kept parallel to themselves, okay? So now d is equal to x, which is equal to half a t square plus v zero t. Now, what is the value of a? A we have determined, which is given by one meter per second, and v zero. Let's check the given. They are telling me So they didn't mention if we started from rest. Okay, so let's, uh, starting from O. Okay, let's say starting from rest. Here make it clear that starting from rest at O. So the object doesn't have any initial speed, okay? So in this case, V0 is 0. So this is equal to half multiplied by 1 at the instant 2 seconds. So this is 2 meters. So the distance t is equal to 2 meters. And this is reasonable because we know that acceleration is 1 meter per second. For 2 seconds, it will be covering a distance of 2 meters. Corresponding for uh, that uh, it increased from 1 meter per second and 1 meter per second. Now, they are telling me calculate the speed of s at t is equal to 2 seconds. So here we expect that also the speed is given by 2 meter per second. So because we are determining the speed, we are interested in this equation, which is v is equal to 80 plus v0. So v is equal to 80 plus v0, knowing that we are interested in determining v. This is 0. So it's simply 1 multiplied by 2, which is equal to 2 meter per second. So the speed at that instant is given by 2 meter per second. So this is it for this exercise. Now let's move to the next exercise, which is given by this. Now exercise number 10, they are telling me in figure 1, a ball of mass m is projected up at A with initial velocity v0 and moves along the line with the greatest slope AB of inclined plane. The force of friction assumed constant between the support and the ball is F. The ball stops at B. So what's happening here that the, po uh, the ball A started, the ball started from A and, and is being pushed by a force upward until it reaches B. Okay, so this is at an instant between the motion from A to B. Now we have an initial velocity V0. and moves along the line of the greatest slope, AB, of an inclined plane. The force of friction, we have the force of friction. 
assumed constant between the support and the ball is F. The ball stops at B. So let's say that VA is different than zero and the speed at the point B is equal to zero. Now take sine beta is equal to 0 0.3 and g is equal to 10 meter per second square, which means that we are performing this experiment on the surface of Earth. Now in number one, apply Newton's second law to show that the acceleration A of the ball is given by this. So in order to apply Newton's second law, we need to follow several steps. First, we need to list the forces that are acting on the ball. We have the weight because simply it has a mass, weight W. We have the, re uh, the reaction, normal reaction, which is R or N we have the force of friction F and no other force is present okay although it's being launched, uh, launched with initial velocity V0 due to an external force but this force is uh, doesn't exist during the motion now we need to represent these forces let me draw the inclined plane So this is the inclined plane, this is the ball, this is the point B, this is the point A, this is the angle beta. Now because the ball is moving upward, let's take the positive, so here, because they gave me an expression of A, they must have chosen the positive direction for me, okay, but let's take it to be upward because this is the direction of motion okay and the y-axis will be perpendicular to the x-axis like this and now let's represent the forces we have the weight which is acting vertically downward like this We have the normal reaction perpendicular to the support and we have the force of friction opposing the direction of motion which is like this. And now let me specify the angle. So as we have mentioned previously this is pi by 2 minus beta and this is beta. Now we are ready to project the forces. So as for the force F, it's given by, so F is opposing the direction of motion which is given by minus F because it's completely lying on the x-axis. As for the weight W, Wx is equal to uh, minus because it's opposite direction W cosine of pi by 2 minus beta which is minus W cosine beta as for WY is equal to minus W cosine sorry this is sine beta and WY simply will be minus cosine beta and as for the normal reaction, it's given by nx is equal to 0 and ny is equal to plus n. Now let's see, apply Newton's second law. So simply in this case, we'll drop down the vector, or let me say some of forces is equal to ma. Now the different forces acting on the body are the small force and force of friction, the weight W and the normal N, which is equal to MA. So we are interested in the projection along the x-axis. So we simply drop down the vectors and each vector quantity will carry the label X. knowing that we are interested in determining Ax. Here the acceleration A is a factor quantity which is Axi 
plus a y j we are interested in determining a which is the square root of a x square plus a y square okay so now a x which is equal to f x plus w x plus n x divided by m now the value of n x is given by zero the value of wx is given by minus w sine beta and fx is minus f. Divided by m. Okay, so ax minus f minus w sine beta divided by m. And now moreover, ay is equal to zero. Why ay is equal to zero? Because simply to our choice, motion doesn't exist along the y-axis. So simply a, which is the square root of ax squared plus ay squared, this is will be zero. So square root of ax squared, which is equal to ax. This gives us plus and minus, but we are always interested in the positive solution. So a is equal to, which is equal to ax, is equal to minus f minus w sine beta divided by m. But in this case, mg appears in the expression because simply w is replaced by the magnitude which is mg so minus f minus mg sine beta divided by m then the value of the acceleration is given minus f minus mg sine beta divided by m okay so this is the expression that we wanted to verify now in figure 2, so they mentioned figure 2, now we can use it. They are showing us the variation of the instantaneous speed of the ball as function of time. Use the graph to show that the speed time equation is, is given by v is equal to minus 40 plus 8. Okay. So look what I will do. I will leave this here because I will use them later. So let me erase only this. Now we are in number two. So let's check the figure. What does this figure represent? This figure represents a curve that shows the variation of v as function of t. Now this curve is particular because it's a straight line. So the first thing that we can do is determine the equation of this curve, which is in the form of y is equal to x plus v. Because uh, y is labeled by v and x is labeled by t, then it has the following form v is equal to at plus b, in which a represents the slope and B represents the y-intercept. So let's say since the curve is a straight line or let me say since the curve that shows the variation of v as function of t is a straight line then v has the following form so variation of the first variable as function of the as a function So first value variable as second of the as function of the second vari variable which is time. So let me repeat first variable as function of the second variable, then v is equal to at plus b, 
in which A represents the slope and B is the y-intercept. So A, which is the slope. Now let's choose two points corresponding to the curve. This is the point A, this is the point B. So the coordinates of the point A are given by 0 seconds, 8 meter per second. And the coordinates of the point B is given by 2 seconds and 0 meter per second. So now the slope is given by ya minus yb divided by xa minus xb. So the value of ya is given by 8, the value of yb is 0, and this is 0 minus 2, which is equal to minus 4. Now what's the unit of the slope? Notice that the unit of the slope is given by... So here, let, let me use v, why I'm using v, y and x. Let me use v and t. So VA minus VB over TA minus TB. So what's the unit of the slope? Notice that this is speed, which is given by meter per second, and this is time, which is given by second. So the unit of the slope is simply given by meter per second square. So A is equal to minus 4 meter per second square. And as for B, B represents the y-intercept, which is 8. So simply B is equal to 8, and this is given by the, let's say, V-intercept, not Y-intercept. So simply V is equal to minus 40 plus 8, and this is done graphically using the curve without studying any type of motion. Now, in number 3, they are telling me identify the nature, uh, the nature of the motion of the ball, justify. Then they are telling me draw a graph as function of time. So because they're asking me about the nature of motion, we need to specify on the left, on the scratch, the different equations of motions that we use in the case of two-dimension motion. Here we are dealing with translational motion and nothing is to deal with circular. So let me write on the scratch. The URM is given by x is equal to vt plus x0. v is equal to a constant and a is equal to a zero. As for the UVRM, x is equal to half a t squared plus v zero t plus x zero. V is equal to a t plus v zero and a is equal to a constant. Now let's split. Okay, so here we can do it in several ways. So what does this speed represent? Does it represent the speed along the x-axis or I don't know, along the y-axis? For sure, along the x-axis because no speed occurs along the y-axis. The y-axis. So here, let me say that uh, since v is equal to minus forty plus eight verifies the general form. v is equal to 80 plus v0 and the trajectory is rectilinear notice that here I didn't split the types of motion we are just specifying and the trajectory is rectilinear because simply it occurs in one dimension which is along the x-axis so previously I have splitted them here I'm not doing any splitting I just uh, justifying that the motion occurs along one dimension and the trajectory is rectilinear then the type of motion is so notice that the speed is linear in time which means that the type of motion is UVR then now at any moment we can use these equations now in number 4 they are telling me show that the relation between F and M is F is equal to 1 times M Okay, so F and M appear in the following relation, which is given by A is equal to minus F.
we need to search for relation between f and m so all of these are kept as a variable we need to replace the value of a the value of g the value of sine beta g is equal to 10 meter per second square no problem as for sine beta sine beta is given by 0 0.3 and the value of A is determined by studying the type of motion so let me say since okay it verifies uh, the general uh, relation which is given by this we can say that V is equal to minus 40 plus 8 and V is equal to 80 plus V0 so why because you have already this is being justified here then by comparison We have that A is equal to 4 meter per second square. So the value of A is given by 4 meter per second square. And we know the value of A. So now let's determine the relation between F and M, which is F is equal to 1 times M. So 4 is equal to minus F minus M multiplied by 10 multiplied by 0 0.3 divided by M. So crisscross 4M is equal to minus F minus 3M. Okay, so the, is there a minus sign? No, let me check. Ah, so this is minus 4. So A is equal to minus 4. So by comparison, the value of A is minus 4 meter per second square this is m and not meter so in this case minus m is equal to minus f so f is equal to m f is the magnitude of the force of friction and m is the mass of the object okay now in part 5 they are telling me what time did the ball stop, stop at point b this can be done by referring to the equations of motion or to the graph Notice that the graph corresponds to the variation of V as a function of T. Uh, the ball stops when the speed is zero. So graphically, it represents to this point on the curve having a value T is equal to two seconds. And here we need to justify that we have used the graph and say graphically. For V is equal to zero, why the ball stops we have that t is equal to 2 seconds and this can be also done using this equation if we put 0 so t will be given by 2 seconds so it can be either done by referring to the graph or to the type of motion now they are telling me calculate the distance a b covered by the ball so which is dx minus x0 so according to the equations of motions we have that d is equal to x minus x0 which is given by half a t square plus v0 t now the value of a is given by minus 4 meter per second square now we need to determine V0. V0 correspond for the speed initially at the instant T0 is equal to 0 starting from point A. So V0 is V for T is equal to 0. Here we can determine this graphically because notice that at this time 0 the speed is given by 8 meter per second. Or simply we can refer to this equation and say that V0 is 8. So V0 is the speed at instant T is equal to 0, which is equal to minus 4 multiplied by 0 plus 8, which is equal to 8 meter per second. So now D, which is equal to half multiplied by minus 4, now it stops at the moment 
t is equal to how much? They are telling me, okay, it stops at t is equal to 2 seconds. 2 to the power 2 plus v0, which is 8, multiplied by 2. So this is minus 2. Okay, so minus 8, I think, plus 16, which is equal to 8 meters. Everything in the side. Let me double check. Yes, and also uh, I have determined V0, we can determine V0 because if you compare both equations, we can check that V0 is given by 8, okay? Recall that this is V0, that is 40 is equal to 0, but this value of T corresponds to the instant that we are interested in calculating, which is the distance covered by the ball when the ball stop at the point B. Here they are telling me they didn't specify that the distance covered by the ball when it stops, but simply because they are telling me the distance AB, AB represents the distance for which it stops because it simply st started from A and ended at B. Now in number 7 they are telling me the normal reaction of the support AB is 10 newtons, calculate F. So we are interested in determining the value of m of f, which is m. In order to determine the value of f, we need to determine the value of m, knowing that they gave me the magnitude of the normal reaction is 10 newtons. Okay, if you know the magnitude of the normal reaction, so what does it mean to know the magnitude of the normal reaction? It means that we need to make use of the projection along the y-axis. So wait plus n plus f is equal to ma, let's project along the y-axis, so wy plus ny plus a small fy is equal to may, and this is zero, no motion occurs along the y-axis. Now wy, if we refer back, wy is given by minus cosine by w, minus w cosine beta. ny is given by capital N, this is 0, which is equal to 0. So w is equal to N divided by cosine beta. N is equal to 10, and cosine beta is given by how much? So we have sine beta. We know that cosine beta and sine beta are related via the following formula. So simply cosine beta is equal to 1 minus sine square beta, which is equal to 1 minus 0 0.3 to the power 2. And let me do it using the calculator. So it's given by 0 0.95. So the value of W is given by 10.53. Everything in the SI, so this is a Newton. And M is equal to W divided by G, which is equal to 10.53, divided by 10, which is equal to 1.053 kilograms. So F is equal to M is equal to 1.053 kilogram newtons. Okay, so F is equal to 1.053 newtons. How come kilogram is equal to newtons? Because simply here M is multiplied by a factor of 1. And this one carries a unit. Notice that here in the question they are telling me F is equal to 1 times M. This one is to indicate that the unit of 1 is a newton per kilogram. Okay? So this is it, the magnitude of F. So that's it for, for me in this video, guys. We will continue our work in part 7 of chapter 7.